you know, credit what credit's due, right? I was like, oh, I hope I'm wrong about the Bungie event. And so far, I'm actually not disappointed. Um, before you go on, I'm not like, oh my god, hype, and I said, no. Uh, the reason why I said I'm not disappointed is that I was wrong. I thought that to participate in the event, you had to um, buy the 30th anniversary pack. That's probably just me not being able to read, but a but uh, no, if you don't have the anniversary pack, the only thing you can't access is the dungeon and Gallahorn because it's tied to like a dungeon. And I and actually might consider you know buying it because I, I like the dungeon. I don't know if it's good or not, but budget tends to be good at their dungeons. Um, but yeah, the Dares of Eternity is free, and then the this is just a part of that. Um, Dares of Eternity is basically like the menagerie, but with more like party esque like vibes. You know, like you have like little power ups, which is just like things that refill your um. You know your abilities and then like you know the little dialogue I, it, it's pretty much the, the the dark horse is pretty much butt stallion from borderlands 2 like it's the exact same dynamic i think it's pretty funny i guess um will dialogue get like repetitive and boring over the next two months probably um although i think it's uh, it's interesting enough because uh they didn't so here, here's like the like thing that I'm curious about. Because usually with stuff like this, there's like a weekly rotation for the activity, right? Like each week would be a different boss. Uh, with Dares of Activity, it seems to be completely random. Because I did like six Dares of Activity and I got like the same, you know, Vex. I'm like, okay, it must be the Vex guy this week. And then I got the Cabal one, I got the Hive one. So I'm assuming that, that second to last room that had the three... Um, Symbols and you gotta guess one. I guess those are the only three bosses or maybe next week since there's like how many fact Aren't there like six factions or five factions? Maybe next week the things will switch out either way um, I think they're neat like for instance I draw that's a homage to destiny one even the uh, theme plays uh, It's really nice uh, Volatile I can't even pronounce it, but you know Volus from uh, You know everyone knows it whether we want it or not. Yeah, that guy's in there uh, as the final boss and towerfall plays That's pretty neat um, definitely, they did bring back some of the mechanics from Sunday, like those bombs that did the laser beams when you throw them, so that was pretty cool. It seems to be like a mishmash of Menagerie, Sunday, like just all that together. Um, and then the high boss is actually Crota, and unlike the raid boss Crota, where you have to, like, you know, shoot off his rockets and get a sword bear, I mean, shoot off his shield thing and then get a sword, it's similar to that, but in a more interesting, I think he's probably the easiest boss, because, like, you, uh, you kill the sword bears, you slam on him, you do some damage, then he does the phase where he makes aspects of himself where he like splits into three, and then you kill the sword bears, and then there's like a buff where if multiple people have a sword, you do more damage. Like it's, it's, I'll, I'll be honest, those are actually some pretty interesting, um, interesting mechanics. Like I'm not gonna lie, kudos to Bungie. Uh, the other two are not so mechanically involved. Um, the Zydron is basically, I forgot the name. The guy from Menagerie, the first boss, the one that's like uh, Greek for dance or something, so it's like a P or H. That guy where he had the detain walls or the kill walls, but uh, instead of them being kill walls, they're actually detainment walls, like in Atheon, like from Mode of Glass. Um, other than that, he just summons stuff. And then the Cabal dude is like the Sundial boss, you just throw the balls at him when he's uh, to break the shield. So, I mean, they're not like, it's not too complicated, but I think the enemy density is nice. Like, it. It, I feel like it's uh, it might overstay its welcome, I guess, for some people because you know we it's kind of like the generic it's like it's like the generic Superman activity, but it's a mishmash of all of them. So maybe and who knows, maybe next week they'll add some more stuff. Or maybe they won't. Either way, um, pleasantly surprised that that was available to everyone. I think I think the reason why I'm a lot happier is that I, I thought all of this was like you had to pay the thing. I'm like, oh okay, that kind of sucks. Although if you're wondering what the twenty five uh, dollar price tag does get you. Um, I will show that. Also, the rumors supposedly were true. Uh, they did bring back... The, well, they didn't bring back... They, uh, the Magnum and the BR from the Halo series have been reimagined in Destiny. Uh, very neat, actually. And I'll give it props. Like, at first, I'm like, oh, what's well, that really a one-to-one -one replica? Like, I was like, oh, this should just be, like, the, the exact battle rifle. Because Halo Infinite, so how come they can't do the exact... They didn't even sound the same. Like, you know... But uh, I kind of, I can kind of appreciate how they didn't just rip it out of the Halo game. They kind of just made it like, it, you know, like a influence. Like the Please. Forerunner thing's a perfect example. It's like, you know where it's come from, but it has like that Destiny touch to it, which makes it unique. So fair enough. Uh, good on them. So uh, yeah, if you buy the anniversary pack, you get all this stuff, which are the, um, I believe these are the ornaments for every, um, yeah, every class. 
So you get all that. I think you, you get some email. I know there's, yeah, the, this one for a brick. Uh, you, yeah. Also, a uh, fun fact. Um, Titans are, I don't know if it's canonical, but Bungie did say that Titans are basically Spartans. They're inspired by Spartans. So even the Forerunner hand, uh, sidearm mentions that. So pretty funny. Um, yeah, that's the Halo 2 line for a brick. He flew pretty good. Uh, Strange Coins are back. You just get them. I, I like, I... I kind of like what they do with this. So, you can get strange coins by pretty much doing anything. And I mean, like, anything. Bounties, heroic events, public, uh, public, sorry, heroic public events, uh, Strikes Crucible Gambit, uh, Dares of Eternity. And I think I might, you know, I haven't done anything yet where it's, like, egregious where I have to get, like, 20 or 30 coins. But I think it's fair the way they did it because you, you, I think it, it, it's a one to one for, like, you do Dares of Eternity, you get a strange coins. Uh, for bounties, I did four, and I got one, so maybe it's 25% chance, but that's not really reliable, because I only did it, like, once. Uh, I don't know about Strikes Crucible game, but I think that's smart, that they let you, basically, you don't have to, like, be stuck in the event, because uh, the issue of Halo Infinite's Fiesta event is that you had to play Fiesta, and that was the only way you could level up through the event. This one is, like, you can get strange coins however you want, um, although you do, to level up, you do have to do Dares of Eternity, so... Technically, that kind of goes back on what I said before. So, yeah, it can get pretty old. Uh, this is just related to the uh, the 400 quests. These bounties don't actually give you bonus progress. They just give you XP. I thought it was going to give you bonus progress. Um, unfortunately, which I think that they took away that I don't like is that you can't preview engrams anymore. At least not like these. Um, but I have gotten some cool weapons like this thing, this Wastelander. I thought it was an exotic because it sounds exotic, looks exotic. And it has a really interesting reticle, and I like I, I want to hit by this gun all the time. Like this, uh, there's also some new perks too. Uh, some really cool perks that are obviously Halo inspired. Like uh, there's momentum, the one that gives you more accuracy or whatever when you move around and stuff. Also, this basically is like a DMT effect. Although on console, it's not really hit firing on console is really iffy at times. Like even with Hush, the bow, like even I, I when I got used to hit firing and Hush, it was kind of like awkward at times because it's on console. Pretty sure on PC, but like you're, you know you're having a great time. Uh, if you're wondering, like this is the thing, uh, shader to kind of make it look like the UNSC weapons. There's not really a good shader I found that makes it look exactly like a UNSC weapon. Um, also, this thing, this thing, ooh, this thing hits like a truck. Trick sleeves are meta. <laughs> oh man. Also, I do again. I, I like I like how they're referencing it. I just like I was like, oh man, I want an energy sword. Well, this like, yeah, well, this is a more interesting energy sword. Also, this eager edge thing. Again, a really cool nod to sword flying in Halo 2. And again, it's just like I, I give props to them. Like uh, that is actually they have they have done some creative ways to like put Halo into Destiny without just ripping like just oh just making this a full ass energy sword. I am disappointed. There's no like special heavy attack. It's just an uppercut. Or, like, there's no, like, finisher animation where you, you know, do, like, the Halo energy sword assassination or whatever. Really neat thing. This is the beam rifle. Or this is the focus rifle from fucking Halo Reach. I, I'm telling you, I don't care what anyone else says. This is the fucking beam rifle or focus rifle from Halo Reach. Also, legendary trace rifle. That is the first. That is interesting. It's going to make some of those bounties easier. Um, but, yeah, that's what Xur has. Uh, the horse... So it's really neat uh, being in third person. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't. Uh, unless you play Garden a lot, you don't really get to see yourself in third person. Uh, he offers you bounties, which give you um, these paraversal hull things. And they're kind of like the, the other events, like the the Festival of Lost or the Dawn, where you get, like, that one random package for the, you know, event cursor that just gives you random crap. Uh, it just says exotic gear. I don't know, like, if it just means, like, any exotic or, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it is. Uh, treasure keys are what you use to um, open this up. I'm pretty sure every time you do a dare of return, you get a treasure key. Um, there, there was an instance, and this one like uh, like uh, really interesting. There, there were two instances where things, where different things happened. Uh, one time I crashed, right? So at the end of the Zydron boss, like I don't know what we did, but um, like we we had like a bonus round, right? Where we had to like defeat a lot of Taken. There's like some new mechanic going on with the fight to the zones, kind of like the blessing in the sky stuff from Blind Well. Uh, unfortunately, I crashed right before we got to complete it, so I don't know what that what that would have equaled. Probably something cool. Uh, the other one with this guy that was like it was apparently like it was a horse's champion. It was like uh, a Taken ogre, and when we killed him, he actually just dropped um 
I believe he dropped a strange coin in a treasure key. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, these, uh, these, I do not know what they do. You have to have the anniversary pack, which I don't have. Um, I'm assuming they give you the armor. <laughs> maybe, not, maybe not this armor, but like the bungee armor. I have no idea what they do. I don't, and I'm pretty sure they might be a one-time use. I don't know. Who knows? Um, also, some little Zerlors in here, too. It's pretty cool. I got feel for my Manzer. Um, so it's pretty cool. I have no idea what the dungeon is. I am completely blind to it. All I know is that that's how you get your Galahorn and the, um, and the, uh, Kalos. And from what I've heard, Kalahorn is overpowered, which is interesting, because another thing people, another, like, in, like, valid theory is that Bungie likes to, to sell, um, expansions or, you know, add-ons and stuff. They'll release really strong weapons and then they'll nerf them down, like, later at a later day. Like, look at Sasis. Uh, look at Forsaken subclass, look at the Forsaken weapons and exotics, like, they're all overtuned and they got nerfed. Uh, people are saying that the C Magnum, or the Ma I'm calling it the Magnum, I'm calling it the Forerunner, it's the Magnum. Uh, in Crucible, apparently the Magnum is really strong, because it's a 3-tap, and it's a 200 round per minute, uh, sidearm, that can duel in hand cannon rage, which is kind of like, uh, Not Forgotten, so, probably gonna get nerfed. Um, I have not played Crucible since the changes, because it's literally just happened today. Don't know about the BR, though. I've heard some good things, but yeah, um, fair enough. Some people are like, well, like, just from what I've seen and what I've heard, apparently Galahorn gives like wolf pack rounds to other rockets, like some crazy ass thing. I'm like, okay, this that's probably gonna get nerfed, probably before Witch Queen, so oh well, um, yeah, but uh, overall, this event. It's day one, so I'm pretty sure in a week from now I'll probably be like, oh my gosh, this is all tired. But um, I, I, the only thing I really like burned through was the quest to get this, uh, get this sidearm because you get it as soon as you finish your, your first run, you get the quest. And when I saw the preview, I'm like, oh yeah, I want that. It, this looks like a, I thought it was like a 10 pace for a second because the trigger guard, it's like a, uh, but then when I saw like, I was like, oh, that looks like the Magnum. Like I wanted that. Um. I didn't, it, the quest was semi-tedious, it was just get strange coins, just basically do Dares of Eternity, and then the other part was do um, bounties. Now, these bounties have stages, right? I'm pretty sure, these are all stage 1s, uh, I'm pretty sure these are stage 2s, so, like you can tell by like the coloring, I guess, and this would be a stage 3. Uh, if you did a stage 3 bounty, uh, you'd finish that step instantly, but these stage 3 bounties are very difficult, and if you don't complete them, in one run they reset and also apparently you can refund these so that's cool uh so i just did these three and uh you know go figure this one's for the pulse rifle the br this one's for the trace rifle the focus rifle and this one's for the new shotgun that's pretty cool um in terms of exotic catalyst i've apparently arbalist has a new catalyst now i haven't checked it out all i know is that it has anti-barrier but arbalist has a new catalyst this uh the magnum has a catalyst but it's not showing up in the uh catalyst exotic catalyst thing where it tells you where to get them so that's probably gonna be at a later date or it's like a secret quest uh probably um but yeah to see this is empty but this is like you know so no idea uh the archer's tempo thing on leviathan's breath doesn't make a difference um it was never really a dps weapon i would have preferred that the um the exotic catalyst or not even just just retool it so that the that the explosion does the most, because the reason why Leviathan's Breath sucks as a stunning bow, like a, because it's an unstoppable bow first, right? It does good damage for heavy X, it does pretty decent damage, for right? But, um, the entire point is that it sucks for unstoppable, because unstoppable have extreme damage resistance until you stagger them. The issue with Leviathan's Breath is that most of the damage comes from the actual arrow, the bolt that you shoot at the unstoppable champion. The explosion does damage, but it's nowhere near as much as the impact damage. So, that's the problem. When you hit them with the bolt, it doesn't, since you stun them with the bolt, that bolt has reduced damage. And then the explosion you do afterwards is at full damage. And you can argue now if Archer's Temple can get maybe a second shot. But, uh, yeah, it's not really, it's not really worth it. I, I would rather have the, it be something other than Archer's Temple. I don't know what it would be, but either that or just retool it so the, the bolt doesn't get affected by the damage reduction on the, um, for, for the staggering. Like, that'd probably be a lot better, but who knows. Uh, Darcy, but using it's actually pretty fun. I haven't used Whisper yet because um, the Horde mode doesn't really lend itself to accuracy because you know there's a lot of crap going on. And with Whisper, if you miss a shot, it kind of fuck up your chain. Darcy can kind of spam it. Also, another cool neat thing is um, 
if you do the jumping puzzles properly or you get the right boss at the end, you get a uh, buff. And I keep forgetting what it's called, but basically the horse likes you and you get uh, increased defenses, which is like damage reduction, but you regenerate some heavy ammo. So if you want to use Lament like 24-7 or you want to use, you know, Gallon 24-7, you can. And there's a, that's a pretty neat thing. Also, keep it when you die. Like if you die and respawn, you keep it. So again, it's pretty fun. Um, kind of reminds me of like the strike D1 strike playlist, like the, you know, modifiers, like the small arms specialists and like the rainbow metal stuff it kind of reminds me of that um but yeah so far for the first day not bad uh i know there's some guns that are haven't that have been shown off that i haven't that i don't think people have gotten yet like i know that sword there apparently there's the, the matador 64 in the cover art um there's another gun that i'm not thinking of that has been that's been shown but hasn't been like found yet so that's pretty interesting uh all the roles you can see on gun uh, d2 gunsmith if you want to see like what the roles can do um, again, props to Bungie for some of these perks are actually pretty interesting, like, and really, uh, unique, so, not, not bad, um, will this event get stale, like, is it worth $25, I, I actually don't know, I can't really get an answer, because I don't, I don't know, like, if the dungeon's really good, and it, and maybe carries it, and it's worth the price, maybe, but then again, if you're really only been buying it for a dungeon, it's like, dude, 25 for a dungeon, damn, that sucks. But, um, yeah, for a free-to-play player or just, you know, someone that hasn't bought it yet, uh, definitely worth your time. Definitely at least try to get, like, uh, the Magnum. That's a good, like, even if this is going to be a good PvE weapon, like, not trying to be hyperbolic, but this might be, like, uh, a, a, an analog to Ariana's Vow. Maybe not the same amount of damage and range, but it, it hits, like, uh, it does, here, I'll show it off. It does, like, um, 11,000, or was it, I think it's 11,000, on, like, um... On, on a goblin. It, do, it does bonus damage to unshielded uh, enemies, which is another reference to Halo, because UNSC weapons were good against unshielded enemies. Um, so again, pretty nice nod. Uh, a, lot, a lot of cool references, even getting it, there's a lot, I don't want to spoil it, like I kind of spoil it saying you get the Magnum, but they're, they're, the little quest leading up to it, I think it's a pretty nice little thing. Um, but yeah, uh, you can fire this thing in full auto, but if you, you know, pace yourself, it actually has, like, no recoil, and it's really good. Uh, the hip fire actually isn't as good, supposedly. I haven't tried it yet, but, um, yeah, pretty cool. I guess I'll show off the, uh, BR. And then the, uh, this, and then that. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Yeah, but so far, um... Not, not too bad. I, I literally was expecting nothing. Like, I was expecting not being able to do anything, so that's a pleasant surprise. Now, will I buy the Wish Queen Deluxe Edition? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Hold on now. Also, another cool homage. If you ever played Halo CE... Yep, you do You do the... You do the uh, I don't know it's... I don't know, I'm not a gun nut, but I know it's like, what, you chamber? Or you're cocking the gun or something? You do that every time you pull it out. And it is affected by handling, so you can go faster. Alright, let's see if the hit fire is good. Yeah, 11, like... I know it's like not 11, that's more than that, but I like to surround it. Also, another thing too is my fucking Halo reflexes, dude. I keep clicking R3 to aim down sights. It's actually just L2. Uh, it's gonna fuck me if I start playing Halo Infinite again. But yeah, the reticle is really clean and nice. Kind of wish it did the two times at the bottom. Like, you know, that's a nice little, you know, detail. But whatever. The VR is actually really close. It has like the similar um, little like diagram at the bottom left. But yeah, the VR. Um, if you put a count balance mod on it, it, it has apparently perfectly vertical, uh, what do you call it, recoil, or if you get arrowhead break, it'll be perfectly vertical, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but like the, like it says, it has increased hip fire, uh, accuracy and stability, basically like a mini DMT effect while firing from the hip. Uh, if I'm on controller, it's not really that effective, like, it's like you can use it, but, um, I don't rely on it. You know? But yeah, like, you know, you can hit fire. It's pretty good. Not too crazy on the recoil, too. Um, another cool thing is that full auto trigger is now a mod, which I know some people might not like, but at least it doesn't cost glimmer. Um, another big thing is all mods cost... All armor mods don't cost glimmer, but these weapon uh, mods still cost glimmer, I guess. Uh, that's better than nothing, I guess. But yeah, um, this does not cost any glimmer to apply, so now you have full auto. Um, I guess it's, it's a fair cro compromise. I would prefer if it was just an option you can select, but I guess it makes it so that all the full auto rolls you have in your vault aren't just immediately sharded. So 
Um, that's neat. But yeah, this is basically firing at the max RPM. Okay, the DJ Gunsmith fly, that's supposed to be vertical. This is not vertical. Nah. Maybe I read it wrong. Maybe I had an extended barrel on my other roll. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much the event. Oh, the uh, energy sword. Also, half truths. Uh, I'm guessing that's the reference to when Arbiter killed Prophet Truth at Ben Halo 3, you know? That's what I'm assuming. And I like the the um, theme of it's like a, like a late night game show or whatever with uh, Zer and the horse. Yeah, so you don't have to be near enemies and you get like a massive uh, lunch range. Um, it also doesn't have to be near enemies. You can do it like without even being near an enemy. This is a cooldown. So like I'm not even looking at an enemy and then you just go like that. Kind of like a world line skate. Really cool. Also a unique reticle. Um, guarding doesn't do anything. The heavy attack doesn't do anything different. Nope. Sound, sounds neat though. Um, yeah, the dungeon, it, it, like, when, when I first played it, I was like, yeah, you know, I could see someone having fun making this. Like, I think they had fun making this. Um, there are new ornaments in the Eververse. Uh, some of them look neat, I guess. Like, Magnum looks pretty cool. Uh, would I spend money on it now? I'll probably wait for Bright Dust, but yeah, this thing, uh. Oh, yeah. No recoil. Like, <laughs> I know I'm on Bottom Tree Gunslinger, but yeah. Um,. There is a negative though, which is like, which I kind of feared is because of the crystal rebalance. The abilities have changed, like the cooldown. Um, it's, it's not as drastic, but it, it, it's, my muscle memory is messed up. Like for instance, my Titan with Hollow by your heart. Uh, for some reason, Solar Grenade has a longer cooldown than Thermite Grenade for some reason. Um, but if Max is a plan, it is 40 seconds, and I know if Hall of Fire Hard is faster, but it's it's still slower than what it used to be, which is kind of annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Um, some of the super things, though, like, I know my, um, yeah, like, eight minutes. <laughs> like, jeez. Like, uh, although it doesn't feel like that in PvE, but then again, I was playing an activity where, you know, you get power-ups that give you ability energy, so maybe that's why no one's really feeling or noticing the change, but, um... Uh, so far, having having fun. I am kind of annoyed it doesn't sound like the BR a little bit, but I can understand why. Although, and then another thing too that I guess was smart. Um, I was wondering why the BR was an energy weapon. I was like, they're all like the Magnum and the BR are kinetics, like in Halo. But I guess it makes sense so you compare the Magnum with the BR, and I'm like that's pretty neat. It's like you can actually have a Halo loadout, you know, Magnum, BR, energy sword. Pretty funny. I think that's about it. There are some exotics I got touched, like now these and stuff. I haven't really tested them out. Darcy seems cool. Is it better than Whisper? Um, I don't know. Probably not. But I'd use Darcy more than Whisper in like activities where it's like a horde mode. But I want to have a like a precision weapon because you know why not? Where Whisper requires perfect accuracy, Darcy you can kind of mess up a little bit. Don't forgive you. Uh, though I did notice that personal system takes slightly longer to activate and. Um, they said they reduced the kick. I don't know. I haven't used Darcy in such a long time. I don't know. It felt like about the same to me, but who knows? I think that's it. Just make sure that is the thing. Uh, yeah, let me show. See, I don't. I don't have it. So. Uh, Gallowhorn has like two ornaments. One from the store. One you get for just purchasing the uh, the pack. And yeah, basically, if you're buying a pack, you're getting a dungeon, Galahorn, and some cosmetics. Uh, is that worth 25? Um, from what I hear, Galahorn seems to be overpowered as shit. So, I, I, if you want to experience Galahorn when it's like overpowered as shit, sure. Although I wouldn't recommend buying it just for Galahorn. Um, maybe for the dungeon because again, I'm pretty sure they're going to nerf Galahorn. Probably the Magnum too. Once, uh, you know, once Witch Queen just roll around, or maybe, like, a little bit after Witch Queen comes out. Uh, has it changed my mind on buying the Witch Queen? Uh, slightly, like, you know, the way they handled this event wasn't as atrocious as I thought it would be. But who knows? Um, probably just gonna get the $40 edition, I don't know. I'm not into... I still don't like how you're basically punished for, um, buying it. Like piece wise, like I've always done this as long as I play Destiny. Like I used to buy individual seasons or uh, expansions because you know sometimes I just wouldn't play for that like year or for that season. So um, I think I've been going on long enough.
Anyways, uh, go get the Magnum. It's really fun. Nice sounding gun. Feels good. Also, it is a sidearm. So, like I said earlier, my, my trick sleeves are probably going to get nerfed. Like, I, I can already, like, this thing. Ooh. Here, let me, um. Hold on. Why can't I equip? I knew it. I fucking knew it. Um, first of all, first things first, these were equipable like two hours ago. So that means someone in Crucible or Gambit or somewhere broke. Because I was about to say, this paired with this does stupid damage. And you can purposely proc yourself with Trick Sleeves. Oh my god. I'm, I'm actually, I can't even get mad. I fucking knew it. Dude, every time, all my little niece little playstyles are not becoming meta, and they're nerfed. God damn it. God damn it. I think I think that's the perfect way to wrap it up. Uh, but yeah, no, the way tricks these work is literally, it, it doubled the damage. It, that 11,000 11, would be, what, 22? This is retarded. Like, this with the Magnum is retarded. Um, I'm pretty sure in Crucible, it'll probably make the Magnum like a two-tap or... Right, it double the damage. So what, dude? It does 69 normally. So like, uh, it'd be less than 140. But basically, you're doing like at minimum like 130ish per shot. So that would be a two tap. And yeah, I can imagine just like talking tricks. He's going like that's like three people dead right there. Yeah, I could I could see that. This thing fires at 200 rounds per minute. Um, but yeah, I've been going on long enough. God, I fucking I fucking knew it. I fucking. I knew it! Oh man, thanks for watching.